Hi there, this is Chris, and what I'm going to do is start off with basically this piece of piston here. Okay, so if I zoom out, perspective mode, what I need to do first is just align this over to the piece that I'm going to be working on, which is over here. And I'm going to basically hide everything that isn't this. So hide unselected. And that gives me a nice place to start from. Okay, so first I'm going to start moving these and just kind of get it central. Go to top viewport, move it across. Okay, because obviously it's important that this thing's kind of central as possible. Okay, now I can come out. Now, what I need to do is build a top part on this, and this top part is going to become eventually kind of really detailed and stuff. So quite a complicated piece that I need to make and I also need to do some stuff on the bottom one as well so what I'm going to do is take this get F4 so I can kind of see where my edges are and stuff I am going to go into my modeling tools do a swift loop and my swift loop is going to come in about there look and then I'm going to take all my verts, bring them down. Then I'm going to take this shape here and use my scale tool just to bring it in. Like that. Okay, so we get a slightly thinner piston than the first one. And then what I can do is select these two edges there and here. And I'm going to chamfer those. So if I get my chamfer tool, let's wait for auto save to finish. And bring it out maybe twice just to make a nice smooth edge there. Okay, so now we have more control over that shape there. I can add some more detail into this soon. Now, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to take this part at the end of our model is just there and I'm going to use shift drag and I'm going to clone it to an object and call this rear lower leg upper piston mount just so I know what the hell it is otherwise I won't have a clue and if I just select it all and then just move my pivot right up top and scale it out there we go. And the reason I make it a little bit bigger like that is so that obviously it's going to fit inside this. And now if I go to my border tool and I'm going to bring my border all the way down to about there. And that'll give me some room basically to kind of play around with this shape and come up with something that's going to work. Now, to start there, you can see we've got a lot of space up here to work with, so that's cool. I'm going to scale this out like that, not too far at first, and I'm just going to start basically kind of messing around with the shape, just using the scale tool while holding down shift just to build and formulate this shape as I go along. Like I say, it's a more complicated shape than the last one, so it's best that we kind of do this the right way if we can. Bring that up to there. Again, I'm just going to scale it in this time. Not too much. And hold my shift key and just drag that to about there. And then I'm going to scale it out again. And come to about there. And then bring that straight up. Now, for this one, I'm going to bring it up again. Then I'm going to cap it like that. Okay, and there's a reason for this, don't worry. Okay, next, I need to widen this a little bit. So if I extrude it straight up again, like that. And this piece here is hollow at the moment, so I'll just flip it. And this means that when I select edges to extrude now, they'll go up rather than down. When I 
want them to. Um, have a quick look at this shape because now I have to start adjusting this shape here. So I'm going to my top viewport and zoom and isolate just for a moment. Well, a few moments technically. So what I need to do now is I need to start moving these here and here. And then here. But I can't just move the top ones, as you see, otherwise that will break the shape. So what I've got to do is do it pieces at a time. So I'm going to take these just here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and its little friends too. But not the top. Okay. Rather cunningly, I've selected the wrong six bits if I just end isolate for a moment, as you can see. So let's do that again, but this time not bollocks it up. One, well I'll do this one. One, two, three, four, and grow. And that gives us those six. Top viewport zoom. Get my scale tool and just do that. And keep doing that until it is flat. Now I'm going to move it out. And then I'm going to try and scale it again, just in case. Okay, perspective zoom. So that's kind of flattened out that area, which is what I wanted. Now I'm going to go around this side. Because I have to do it again. So if you remember, I was coming out basically from the halfway mark. I'll just find that again. One. So I'm going to select one, two, three, four click grow, and that'll give me that part, and then I can just do this, wait for auto save again, again don't don't turn off auto save, 3ds max sometimes takes a little bit of unhappy things going on and crashes if uh, we're working with high poly and you won't, you'll not want that, no one wants that, so take your time and it'll all work out. Okay, perspective zoom. No, not render texture, perspective zoom. There we go. And again, that leaves us with these polygons on the back. Click grow. And of course we can now flatten them fellas. Like that. So now we have a single object so we're not going to weaken it by having strange breaks in our mesh. Oop, there was a three things that should not have been selected there. Hang on, I'll just mark you deselect. There, that's better. Okay, now I'm going to end isolating because I need to build this against this part over here. And as we can see, it should actually be a bit higher up. So, start bringing it to about there, and now I can start expanding these parts down a bit. where this connects. I'm going to have a look at this. And this piston at the back is more or less built in static, which is quite entertaining. Um, I'm going to select these ones. So let's use my select tool for this part. 
And then I'm going to go around. And yes, there are quicker ways of doing this. Just a fancy, you know, relaxing and doing it slowly. Okay, don't want to select anything on the back here. So, uh, marquee select or deselect rather. Okay, so that gives us those shapes. Now, what I'm going to do is do an extrude by local normal. That should bring them straight out. About that far. It's not too far. Click, tick. Okay, go to my top viewport and zoom. Let's make sure the back there is straight, which it is. Okay, now. This next part, I'm going to grow my uh, grow my selection like that, and then deselect my marquee just here. Okay, go around that. That seems fine. And now I can extrude this up to round about there. Now you can see we have some exciting errors going on here. Because I want to extrude only by group. And now at the top here, where all this stuff is, what I'm going to do is grab this and inset it just a little bit, like that. And then do a cut there to there. And what I can do with this is just take away this polygon. Instead, take this one. going to rotate it 180 degrees just clone to an element and then bring it in yep and that's going to go there like so okay now what I can do is I can start doing some target welds Rather usefully, I'll just bring this a little bit further back. There we go, and now go in here and let's go into the target weld tool. Because we already have the correct number of verts and so on, so we may as well make use of it. still. So just touch all these together. And again you don't have to do it this way, you can just put geometry on geometry. And that'd be quicker, but sometimes I like to do things kind of this way. It makes a much more pleasing shape. And what we have here really is kind of a very detailed part of our model. So the nicer we can make it look, really the better it's going to be anyway. Okay, now what I have to do is do a bridge straight across the middle here. One, two. Now, you may notice obviously this middle edge here. It banged right. And now it is. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these three. Control backspace because I don't need them. 
There we go, all gone. Perspective and zoom. And now as you see our shape at the top here is much more pleasing. Okay, now at the top where this all happens, I'm going to make a polygon and I'm going to go into bevel and I'm just going to basically come straight up like that bring it in and go up like this and like this, just half the size half the size again Quite easy making a dome shape, just need to make practice for yourself really. There we go, and that goes on there like so. Okay, now look over my model again, and I think I need to put a couple of swift leaps in. So I'm going to put one in here and one in down here. Reason being, I can now grab some polygons just here and here. Well, not those ones, they want. I don't want those ones, I want these ones. One, two, three, four. And click grow and just do an extrude. Basically, that's going to be embedded into this part here. So there's not actually going to be any particular rotation as such, or rotation controllers, but it'll give the impression that it does rotation control. Okay, now, if I get this edge here, and I think actually I should probably just get my vert, it'll be easier. I can make it fit just into there, like so. I'm just coming around and make sure that my shape isn't compromised in any way. Does not appear to be, so that's jolly. Okay then, so next I need to add in my edges to this just to obviously stop it being too uh, severe. So I'm going to isolate my selection. Have a quick look at it actually before I do as well. Down here on this part I need to do some swift loops and I need to make six. So one, two, three, four. Wait for to save again. Okay, that worked out quite well. So now if I go to my left viewport, zoom, and I'm going to grab, see, do I need to grab this one to there, there, and there. There we go. Zoom out. And this will give me a nice piece. So let's have a look. I'm going to extrude it. A local normal. Let's bring that in. And click tick. There we go. Now I have another piece that I'm going to have to have come out of this as well. Um, so. This one's a slightly more complicated shape as well. I think it might be easier if I have this one as a separate shape that's kind of booleaned out of it. So what I'm going to do is just look at this. And I'm going to make a cylinder. Let it come out the side. No, that wasn't the side. Let it come out the side. So I'm going to do it for about here. 
in there. And I'm going to give it a radius of 20. Uh, no, 20. And a height of 8. One height segment. And 22 sides, because that's nice and smooth. Okay, and I'm going to manipulate that to where I need it, which is about there. Like so. Now then, I need to make a copy of this. And my copy is going to be called um, Piston Detail Cylinder 01. Okay, and then this is going to be called Cookie Cutter 1. And then I can make a copy of Tool Cookie Cutter 01. Bring it over here. Because I'm going to need another one later. And then if I go to my top viewport, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this in to there. So it's just before that part. Just halfway in, and the same there. Now I'm going to convert it to an editable polygon and attach it to the other one. Okay, perspective zoom. And this saves me having to do all sorts of mad things that would otherwise, you know, it's a pain in the bottom. Right, now for these, while I've still got them here, I'm going to quickly hit F3, there and there. Then I can just do a quick bevel. Okay. Now then, because we're doing this, I'm going to save as, because you never can tell if our old friend 3ds Max is going to throw a big old wobble. And I'm going to call this WB1, which is workbench. Yes, I do want to replace it. I always make a workbench if I'm not sure if Max is going to be very, very unhappy with something I'm about to do. Okay, now if I take this shape, compound objects, pro boolean start picking, Bamo, and it is gone. Right click, convert to editable polygon. Okay, and we didn't need to do too much in the range of cleaning up the model, which makes a nice change. So next I'm going to go back to isolating my selection so I can look at it. Quite a lot going on here, obviously. Now, if I do a turbo smooth on it, because of that chamfer over there, if I just, not chamfer, that boolean rather, if I just do a reference I'll show you. You'll see that we get some really unpleasant looking shapes going on here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to rescue this as best I can. Now then. First, I have to ask myself, what is that? Oh, I know what to do. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, delete, and then I'm going to rebuild these sections here with a bridge. And you can see it's starting to kind of fix my model over there, which is important. And again, because booleaning does weird things to your model, okay? The way it optimizes it is mad. Okay, so bridge. Again, you can see it's done it over there. Now with this one, probably going to have to do it manually, which is a bit of a nuisance. I prefer not to. So first things first, I'm going to get rid of this. Looks like I can rebuild the bridge again. Now you may notice the bridge is a little bit off there. Let's go around it, have a look. And it's probably because it's got rid of some of the verts that we needed when it made this into this kind of Mickey Mouse simplistic model. Much like extreme aggravation. You see, it thinks it's been quite helpful, but in actual fact, it really isn't. Uh, it might be easier to go back and undo the bevel if we can. Uh, not the bevel, the chamfer rather. Nope, we can't. Uh, 
God damn it. Fortunately, I can call it back up. And we still have the original model here. Hooray! Okay, so what's going to be a better idea is to actually do all the other stuff I need to before I add this on. So what I'm going to do is take this, just copy it over here. And again, I'm going to put an open subdivision on it, but not on this one. And that way I can basically make sure that these pieces look okay and are nice and smooth. So I can go straight to swift looping here. As you see, we can start putting some nice tight edges on our model straight away. Now I'm making the edge a little bit less tight on this part. It's a little bit more rounded. And then again just a little one there so we get that rounded shape there. Now down here. Start rounding this. Now I don't really want to put an edge in there because if I do it might straight actually no it hasn't done too badly so I'll let that stay for a minute at least it will straighten out these right now I'm going to go straight through here now you see it loops straight back down again don't want it to do that ones. I'm going to hit F4 now so I can see where I've been going. I can set it up so I've got two viewports, one without my edged polys and one with, but uh, it's up to you. If you want to do it that way you can. I'm not going to because effort. I'm getting old now, man. I'm getting stuck in my ways, you see. Okay, now you see this one's really rounded, so we need to obviously get rid of that. So that's nice and straight. And then down here. Now then, we've got some parts missing from the middle, but you know what? I don't care. I really genuinely do not. So, I quite like that weird keyhole shape. I don't even know why, it just makes no sense. But it's cool. Okay, now here. It's bizarre how it kind of loops down for this one. Which puts some strange shapes onto our pieces, but such is. Now we'll do it again on this side. because we can always get rid of some extra edges if we need to. Now on the back here. Now if you have trouble, look, kind of getting it, just move your mouse really slowly. Or zoom in, or just, you know, keep manipulating your scene until disappears. There we go. One there. One there. And I'm just going to have a look at this shape. There and there. Just to straighten up a bit more. 
Okay, and that gives us that nice shape there, so that's cool. And if I just do a quick F4 so we can have a look at it. Yeah, that's nice, that. Okay, next. What I'm going to do is take away my clone, because I don't really need that now. And I can take this one and dump open subdivision on it instead. Okay, and now I'm going to collapse it, because I kind of have to. And you'll see that we have quite a dense looking mesh, but that's absolutely fine. Okay, and isolate. Now we have, if you remember, this mesh here. I'm just going to do a quick Control S just to save my project so far. And then if I grab this and do a Pro Boolean. And convert to editable polygon. Okay, so that's a nice sharp edge we've got there. Now if I just isolate it again. As you'll see it's cleaned off quite a lot of the um, edges and so on. So that makes things a teeny bit easier. And if I just come out, if you look the selection tool is actually chosen for us everything we need to chamfer. Good old Pro Boolean. Okay, so now if I do a chamfer, and I've got to keep it small because there's a lot of weird little isolated, isolated verts out there. See? A lot. I might have to just go in and just fix those anyway, so let's have a look at those. There are many. I'm just going to go through and delete them, because they will cause hassly issues otherwise, especially that one. Like I say, sometimes it thinks it's being a helpful Pro Boolean tool. It doesn't know any better. Look at that. I can probably target well that straight across without too much of a hitch. There we go. I'm not going to move the other ones because I think it will just damage the model. I think I'll move this one. I'm just trying to avoid making pinches. Yeah, I can't move that one, see? I'm just trying to avoid making pinches where I can. Because I can't create geometry where it won't fit. Okay, backspace away that one. Right. Quick check of the model again. And just a very small chamfer just to set a lip on it. Not point 0.1 should be more than enough. And click tick. Okay, come out and just do a quick walk around the model, just make sure it hasn't been ruined, which can happen surprisingly easily. Okay, that seems good. Next, I need to put some detail parts onto this. Fortunately, I have a couple, so I'm going to unhide all or end isolate or whatever it is I'm doing. End unhide all. Okay, and I'm going to grab one of these pieces from over here, and I think it's going to be this one, because I quite like this one. So shift and drag. Bring it over to there just to make a copy. Get it up in roughly the right place. And then if I select just these two pieces, I can isolate them again. Okay, and I'm obviously going to be working with a much smaller scale piece than this one. So 
I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with this one just being on top of the other polygon really otherwise it's going to cause some issues so I'm going to modify this so I'm just going to bring this up a little bit and in and then I can grab this bit and just chamfer it Okay, and that rounds it underneath. Right, now if I go to my object paint and pick my object, that's that. I'm going to paint on any object that's underneath my mouse. Okay, and I can adjust my height of my object like so. Okay, and then delete it off. So 26%. I'll make that 20%. Just be on the safe side. And then I can just place it where I need to. I think actually 20 could be a bit small. 30 looks ideal. And. Carefully looking at where I'm putting things. And I'm being careful, obviously, to hit delete whenever it's not quite in the right place. There we go. Going around my model constantly, just really being careful where stuff goes. Remember constantly just go back and check if you're not sure if it's in the right position. Okay, it saves having a model that is all messed up and horrible. Alright, that looks good. That's in the right places as far as I'm concerned. this to shaded rather than realistic now because otherwise it's going to start pulling a lot of processing time and you can see we've got some really rather jinked up um, polygons there so we can fix those too if we need to okay I'm going to do some attaching it's up to you if you want to rotate these pieces Okay, so now that I've finished having my thinking session with myself, I can now close that off and unhide all. And we're starting to see 
this shape and how it's going to work on that. Now, what I have to do is put in some sockets on this. So, I'm going to again isolate this and I need to put sockets, well I'm going to have to have two here and then I'm going to have to have another two here and here. So for sockets, the easiest thing to do is probably just to build a couple. They're not especially hard, they're just cylinders. So I'm going to build a box. Like that. You'll notice my box is roughly the same position once I've fitted it as this. Okay, just so that we can obviously build off our cylinders. And I'm going to make one using auto grid. That's not a cylinder. Here we go. Like that. And then like that. Okay, now I can get rid of that. And this one's the right size for the first piece that I need. But I just need to put some extra detail into it. So right click convert to editable polygon and poly mode and I'm gonna use mine as bevels. If you're not comfortable with bevels, just use insets or anything else you want to use. So if you look I'm just using some zero height extrudes like that. Yeah, and that gives us this shape. Right, now what I'm going to do is just quickly go around these. I did say it was high polygon, I believe, some time ago. Remember, we can't do a circle on that one. Okay, and chamfer. So for this one, 0 0.25 is too much. 0.1 is pretty much actually. So let's apply 0 0.05. There, that'll do. Tick. Now I'll catch the edge of the light nicely. Now I'm just going to move this into the position I need it. So one's got to go there. And two small ones. One here. One here. And a larger one. Right here. And I'm just going to make sure it's grown on all sides. And that's going to come down to down here. Like that. Okay. Now I'm going to just pull this out a little bit. Like so. Okay. And these don't need to flex because this is just a single object. So what I'm going to do is attach these again. Okay, and then if I go into my leftist most viewport, I'm going to create a box like that. Yep, it's actually in the right position, so that's good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to draw out... That was nearly in the top right position anyway. I'm going to use this to draw out the um, pieces that I need. So rather than having this as a positive height, I'll make it negative. There we go. And then over here, go to lines. Make sure auto grid's on. And I'm going to go corner to corner, because that will make things a teeny bit easier for me. So now if I start from here, 
Take a small piece straight out. Okay, that's one. Now this one. Now I don't need this box anymore. And I can come over here to this one. And what I'm going to do, firstly, is adjust the curves on this. So one, two, three, four. Make these smooth. And now I can adjust this just a little bit so that it stays smooth and doesn't do horrible things that I don't want it to. These can come in. That goes into there, and then this will come out to here. Okay, and we've got this rough shape. Now, what I can do is do the rendering and enable in renderer and in viewport. And suddenly we get this, and then I'll change our thickness like that, and our sides perhaps to that. 12 isn't many. Okay, and I'm going to just drop on top of this and edit poly. Also, do a control S just in case because you know, autodesk. Right, with that one, I can now do a ring and then hold control and do a loop or just hold loop anyway. And I'm going to alt marquee jag deselect the ends here. And now what I can do is chamfer these just a little bit. Actually before I chamfer them I think I'll extrude them. So give it a negative height. Increase the gap. Click tick. And I ring that. I'll come all the way down, including on these end ones. So I'll just do a marquee grab again, deselect those pieces. So, what I want to do is just smooth these bits out a little bit by using a chamfer. Like so, tick. Okay, that's good. Okay, so that gives us our first one. Now I need to do this second one. So, left viewport again. This time, zoom on this one. Flip by vert. And change these to smooth. Same as before, I'm going to have to do a little bit of editing of this just to get the shape nice and smooth. So there, like this. A lot of it's down to kind of distance between parts as to how smooth it gets. And then enable in renderer and viewport. Increase ye thickness. And of course sides as well to 18. Now what I can do is get this piece and just drag it in. Make sure both of them are in the right socket obviously. And from another perspective, what I need to do is move one of these out of the way of the other one. So it might be easier working on this one than that one. So go to line. Show it result. And what I can do is just start moving it across a little bit. So it's out of the way. Okay. 
There you go, so now it's winding around the main cable slightly, which looks a lot nicer. Okay, now for this one, what I'm going to do is add on Edit Poly again. And without Edit Poly, I'm just going to select this, then, I don't know, loop, ring, deselect, down here and down here. And then I should be able to do an extrude the same as before. do a ring again, deselect there and up here, and then I can chamfer. Let's bring this down. And click tick. So now these hoses are completely manipulatable, which is kind of useful. What I can do is I can actually give a little bit more weight to our edge, or line rather. So I'll just start to bring it down a little bit more here, as if the weight of it's kind of pulling it down a bit. There we go, and that creates the two interlinked shapes there and there, which is nice. Now what I can do is I can attach these onto the main thing, because I'm not really needing them again. There we go. And end isolate. So now we're back to here again. Okay, so... I'm going to break this up, so in the next part I'm going to be doing the detail and attaching onto this and probably doing our rigging parts that need to be done and so forth. So, until then, I'll see you in the next part. Bye-bye for now.